Um, it is useful, as before, to choose a complex structure. Well, um, when we'd like to put a complex structure on Y, complex structures on Y come uh, or are, are, can be induced by complex structures on sigma. Choosing a complex structure on sigma, um, we can establish an isomorphism uh, between flat G connections um, and stable holomorphic GC connections. Um, so this space of flat of real flat connections has an algebraic description in a given complex structure um, as topologically trivial. stable um, holomorphic GC bundles. Uh, on sigma. So there are two things that go into this identification. Um, roughly what one does to take the connection along sigma first write it in complex coordinates then use a complex gauge transformation um, to go to a gauge where the az part is zero um, then that leaves an AZ bar, which goes into the definition of the del bar operator. So del bar A. <coughs> um, the del bar operator endows uh, this bundle with the holomorphic structure. Um, it commutes, well, in order to have a del bar operator, this needs to commute with itself, and that comes from the original connection being flat. Um, also, from the fact that the original connection was flat, um, this bundle is, is topologically trivial, has a zero trunk class. So this is a standard trick. Um, once one arrives at holomorphic GC bundles, um, one can look for uh, holomorphic sections in a, of an appropriate line normal. Um, another wonderful thing that Witten realized in his paper on this long ago uh, is that this is actually a determinant line bundle uh, for, for the Del Bar operator. So, so the Hilbert space is is holomorphic sections of the kth power of some line bundle on Y, um, where where L is such that it's First turn class is this Atiyah bot form, um, and the bundle whose first turn class is the Atiyah bot form um, is is precisely the, the, the determinant line bundle of, of the Del Bar operator. Um, At least in at least in type A, in general, there it might be some uh, some root of the determinant line. Right. Del bar acting on the adjoint bundle. 
Yes. Um, and yeah, then one proceeds. So uh, as a quick example, uh, if sigma is T2 and our group is U1, we are led to consider uh, holomorphic GC bundles on sigma. Um, in other words, GL1 bundles on sigma with a fixed complex structure, in other words, an elliptic curve. Um, this is the Jacobian. Uh, it's itself an elliptic curve. then we're dealing um, with holomorphic line bundles on the elliptic curve, which we talked about this morning. Um, the Hilbert space um, ends up containing level k. So in the case where sigma is to t2 and the group is u1, uh, the story boils down to quantum mechanics uh, with whose target is the Jacobian. Uh, in fact, when sigma is any surface and the group is u1, we get quantum mechanics whose target is the Jacobian. Um, if the group is not U1, but sigma is still a torus. Um, this is still fairly nice. Um, and one gets theta functions that are violent variant. Um, in other words, uh, less Sumina Whitman characters. Um, so this identification of the transcendence Hilbert space uh, with sections of the determinant line um, was the starting point for many, many developments. Um, so it allowed Witten to connect transcendence theory with conformal field theory um, and get a modular functor um, out of transcendence. Um, this definition of the Hilbert space depends on a choice of complex structure on the underlying surface. Um, in, in a locally trivial way. Um, as one applies mapping class transformations to the surface, one gets an action of the mapping class group on, on the Hilbert space, leading to a modular functor story. Um, it's also the starting point for cutting and gluing in, in transignments. So um, the way partition functions are explicitly computed uh, is by cutting manifolds up into, into pieces and taking inner products in this fine, well, in this Hilbert space, which is finite dimensional as long as the group is compact. As, uh, as a side note, uh, I should say that when the group is not compact, something like SL2C, um, the space Y is also not compact. And taking holomorphic sections of a line bundle on a non-compact space gives me an infinite dimensional Hilbert space. Um, and that, that's, that statement is sitting at the root of a lot of the difficulties and features of doing SL2C transignments theory. Um, if the group is compact, everything is fairly straightforward. 
questions? Okay. Um, so now let me say a little bit about operators in this theory. one looks for in a quantum field theory are local operators. They're the things sitting at points. And Turn Simons doesn't have any. <clears throat> so remember that operators are functions from fields uh, to the complex numbers, uh, but doing everything in a gauge invariant way, really want functions from fields modulo the gauge group to complex numbers. Um, the only field I have is A, and A is not gauge invariant. I can't use that. I could try to use F, the curvature, um, and take traces of F or powers of F uh, but the equations of motion set f to zero. And it turns out that, that these operators um, also have zero expectation value. Um, so there's nothing to do locally. Instead, the interesting things in terms of are line operators. And oh, sorry. Uh, a <laughs> yes. The zero expectation value is just the classical limit of the expectation. I mean, one, one loop. So, um, the an expectation value of the equations of motion is always zero, um, as as a fully as a fully quantum state. Um, so. equations of motion for some field. Right. Like that. Right, it is. Yes. yes. And Expectation value of an equation of motion is always zero. Right. But is this the same as saying that the trace of that expectation value is zero? Yes. Um, well, in, in fact, so I'm doing trace just because I want something gauge invariant and not abelian theories. But, but yes, because. Uh, DSDA in transcendence oh, is, is a extended operators that sit along lines. There are two types. Only one of them gets frequently mentioned. Um, it's likely because these two types are secretly equivalent, but the other description is extremely useful. Um, so I want to talk about both. Um, so they're line operators. The first type involves Wilson lines. Uh, 
these are labeled by their support, a curve gamma. Um, closed, oriented curve. Um, and a representation of G. Our Wilson line is supposed to be a function from fields to C. Um, and it just computes the trace and representation R <coughs> of the holonomy of the connection along gamma. Computing expectation values of Wilson lines leads to not polynomials. Um, so Or more generally, on an interesting closed three manifold, um, Wittgenreschti and Terai invariants. <coughs> um, that's uh, that's an old story that can be looked up in many places, including Witten's original paper. Uh, but there is another way to. Think about this. So there is another type of line operator, namely the vortex lines. These are um, an example of what are called disorder <coughs> operators in quantum field theory. Let me explain how these are defined. So. Again, we'll choose a closed-oriented curve in M and a conjugacy class. In the group, then we want to construct a vortex operator V gamma C. We are going to define it by a prescription for computing its expectation value, which is the only thing one needs with operators. Um, so this isn't, this isn't really a function. It's not an operator of the type we had before, a function from fields to C. Um, however, it behaves the same way inside correlators. Um, so To compute the expectation value of V gamma C and anything else, we're going to do the path integral on the three manifold with the curve gamma removed. <coughs> Um, together with a singular boundary condition. <coughs> um, and if this is my curve gamma, the boundary condition forces non-trivial holonomy <coughs> along an infinitesimally small loop linking gamma. Um, so it's a boundary condition um, forcing uh, the holonomy um, along this linking curve, we'll call it eta, um, to belong to the conjugacy, conjugacy class C. Um, along an infinitesimally small curve data. What is gamma again? Sorry? What's gamma again? Is that the surface or the free gamma? 
Gamma is a closed oriented curve yeah. in the three manifold. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it dependent on the eta? Is is what? It depends on the eta. No, no, no. The eta. Sorry. Eta, eta is any. Um, <coughs> sorry. So first, the statement is true as uh, eta shrinks to zero size. So as you get infinit infinitesimally close to gamma, and eta can lie anywhere. Um, I mean, this, this is a statement for any any such any such eta that's that's linking that's linking my curve gamma. So in two dimensions, there's a notion of a parabolic structure. Yeah. This is the three dimensional way of um, This is um, yes, I think is the answer. Uh, when if we start to slice up the manifold, we end up with parabolic structures. So, but. This is a notion that doesn't depend. So in order to talk about parabolic structure, you need to slice things up and choose a complex structure on the slice. And, and I don't need to do any of that. So why does it not depend on where it is? is? Um, trying to get contribution. So, <coughs> The statement a priori is that the definition of this operator is for any eta, yeah. um, for for any any such curve. Oh. This condition has to hold. Oh, I see. Um, I mean, oh, and I see. given a classical solution, so <coughs> flat connection, then, okay. then, then of course by conjugacy <coughs> it, it won't matter. But uh, and so, so so the condition has to be compatible with classical solutions, and it is. Uh, in particular, that's why I chose a conjugacy class over here. Right. Um, uh, but I should write explicitly um, for any such data. Now, just to, to illustrate, so in local coordinates, um, here's our curve gamma. Um, if we choose some local polar coordinates um, on on a slice transverse to gamma, um, then a connection with this property, a flat connection with this property. Um, looks like alpha d theta <coughs> uh, where e to the alpha is an element of the conjugacy class. Um, and this may not, I told you this was a singular boundary condition, this may not look singular. It is because d theta is singular uh, at, at the position of the line. Uh, if we compute the curvature um, that's alpha times <coughs> a delta function two form on on gamma, the Poincaré dual of gamma. Um, okay. So these line operators exist in a generic three-dimensional gauge theory. They would be independent of Wilson lines, uh, but in transcendence they're actually equivalent. So. Yeah. Yes. So, on the other hand, we're doing the path integral is over gamma minus gamma. So, it's actually true that this kind of thing only depends on what you could say <coughs> gamma is in an infinitesimal neighborhood along gamma. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's a Stokes theorem type of thing. Okay. Yes. Um, another. Um, so, so another way to say it would be to um, to take this this flat connection. Um, 
um, and say that um, I don't need to cut anything out. Um, I can do the path integral over connections um, that are finitely far away from this one. So, so in, in introducing sort of a singular profile to begin with, and then integrating on deformations away from that singular profile uh, is, is, is the same thing. Um, um, so um, so th this can be done for any, any, sort of, any sort of operator in quantum field theory. Um, there, there, are, there are these two different sorts of definitions. Either it's, it's a function from fields to the complex numbers supported on in the neighborhood of a particular locus, or you specify that fields have to have a singularity on a particular locus. But then, as you said, always you only get an expectation value here. It's not actually the expectation value of a yes. classical observable, right? Um, the lovely thing is that in, well, including in this quantum field theory, there are all sorts of dualities that relate operators of one type to operators of the other. Um, which then makes it incredibly natural to, to include both. Um, in, in fact, you're in a sense forced to, to think about both. Um, so, what's the statement? Wilson line gamma r is equivalent to vortex line gamma c. Um, and by equivalent, I obviously mean inside correlation functions the site is only defined inside correlation functions in any expectation value. So what does the path integral integrate on each year? Um, Over there you are integrating a trace function, yes? Yes. And here? It's, um, it's, it's you remove this. You might have some other operators, Wilson lines, whatever. Oh, OK. Um, uh, but so you remove this operator, you remove the curve gamma, and you do the integral with singular boundary conditions. I see. And that's it. And you integrate. OK. Yeah. Um, to relate the representation in the conjugacy class, if you are familiar with Borel bot, you use that. Um, more explicitly, um, remember that um, reps come from quantizing coadjoint orbits. Um, so R is the quantization of a G orbit. Uh, through some weight. We want to turn this weight into a conjugacy class. Um, well, it's sitting in the dual of the Lie algebra, but we can use the Cartan killing form. Um, in particular, we use the form that's sitting in the turn Simons functional, uh, k times the trace, however normalized, uh, to relate. Um, this weight to co-weight. <coughs> um, and then the conjugacy class is just uh, just e to the co-weight. Um, explicitly, 